So now we are going to solve the 91 question. See the question here. Which of the following method is used to measure the medium value of resistance? So which of the following method is used to measure the medium value of resistance? Option A, loss of charge method. Option B, potentiometer method. Option C, Kelvin Neville bridge method. And option D, which is carry Foster slide wear bridge method. So these four options, option D, which is the carry poster slide wear bridge method is the correct solution of this question. Whereas the loss of charge method is used to measure the high resistance. So by using the loss of charge method, we can measure the high resistance. Whereas with the help of, with the help of, with the help of potentiometer method, we can measure the low resistance. Similarly, with the help of Kelvin double bridge method, Kelvin double bridge method, by this method, we can measure the low resistance. Whereas with the help of carry force slide wear bridge method, we can measure the medium value of resistance. So let me explain in some more detail for each and every resistance, what are the different methods? Let me explain here. So I already told you, the resistance are classified into three types. The number one is called as the low resistance, and the number two is called as the medium resistance, and the number three is called as the high resistance. So low resistance means whenever the resistance value is less than one ohm, then those resistance are called as the low resistance. The different types of methods to measure the low resistance are ammeter voltmeter method, potentiometer method, and Kelvin double bridge method. So by using these methods, we can measure the low resistance, which is ammeter voltmeter method, potentiometric method, Kelvin double bridge method. For us, the second one is the medium resistance. Medium resistance means whenever the resistance value is lying from 1 ohm to 100 kilo ohm, then those resistance are called as the medium resistance. And by using the different, by using these methods, we can measure the medium resistance. The methods are voltmeter, ammeter method, substitution method, ohm meter method, Wheatstone bridge method, and the carry poster slide work bridge method. So these are the different methods by which we can measure the medium resistance. As you can see clearly, carry poster slide work bridge method is lying in the in the medium resistance, so therefore it is going to measure the medium resistance. Whereas the third one is called as the high resistance. High resistance means the resistance, if the resistance value is greater than 100 kilo ohm, then those resistance are called as the high resistance. And the different types of methods in order to measure the high resistance are loss of charge method, direct deflection method, Megler method, and the mega ohm pitch method. By using these methods, we can measure the high resistance. So these are the three types of resistance and the ranges of the resistance and also different types of methods. So these are the things always you have to keep in your mind. So if you know each and everything regarding this one, you can easily solve this type of questions. So therefore we can say the loss of charge method is used to measure the high resistance, whereas the potential meter method as well as the KN double bridge method, these two methods are used to measure the low resistance, whereas the carry process slide wear bridge method is used to measure the medium resistance. So this is the correct solution of this question. So now we are going to solve the 92nd question. See the question here. Which of the following instruments are used as the transfer instruments in the standardization of the AC potentiometers? So which of the following instruments are used as the transfer instruments in the standardization of the AC potentiometers? Option A, thermocouple type instrument as well as the electrodynamic type instruments. Option B, rectifier type instruments only. Option C, thermocouple type instruments only and option D, electrodynamometer type instruments only. So all these four options, option A is the correct solution of this question which is thermocouple type instrument as well as the electrodynamometer type instruments are basically used as the transfer instruments in the standardization of the ASIC, ASIC potentiometers. So let me explain in detail manner. See basically, what is the meaning of transfer instrument? The transfer instrument means, suppose if I design an instrument to measure the DC value, so without any modification, so without any modification, if I try to measure the AC quality and there will be no error, we can say the accuracy is same in both the DC measurement as well as AC measurement, then those type of instruments are called as the transfer instruments. So the meaning of transfer instruments means, suppose if I design an instrument particularly to measure the DC quality, Suppose if I am not going to use any modifications, but still the same instrument are used to measure even the AC quantity, then the accuracy, whatever the DC measurement as well as the AC measurement, if the accuracy is same, then those type of instruments are called as the transfer instruments. 
and the examples of the transfer instruments are the electrodynamometer type instrument as well as the thermocouple type instrument. So these are the two, we can say these are the two examples of the transfer instruments which is electrodynamometer type instrument as well as the thermocouple type instrument. So here this electrodynamometer type instrument is basically used, it is basically used in the standardization process of the AC potential meter. So it is called as a transfer instrument. So with the help of this electrodynamometer type instrument, we can measure the current so by using this instrument by using certain modifications we can we can try to measure the current with the help of ammeter so we can even use this instrument to measure the voltage even the power as well as the react to power also as well as power factor as well as frequency so we can say with the help of this emmc instrument we can make the ammeter from it as well as voltmeter from it as well as watt meter also as well as the react to power meter or the wav meter as well as the power factor meter as well as frequency meter so by using some modifications for this emmc we can we can make the ammeter voltmeter watt meter react to power meter or the war meter or the power factor meter or the frequency meter all these things we can we can make from this emmc by using certain modifications similarly the thermocouple instrument means the thermocouple instruments are basically work on the principle of Seebeck effect. The input is the temperature difference and the output is the either voltage or the current. So whenever you connect two different metals and if you join the two different metals and if you if you try to keep a potential or you can see if you try to keep temperature difference between the two junctions and because of this temperature difference a current is going to get flow. So this principle is called as a Seebeck effect. So thermocouple type instruments are basically work on the principle of the Seebeck effect. So these thermocouple instruments can also measure both the AC as well as DC because I already told you EMMC as well thermocouple type instruments are basically used for both AC as well as the DC measurement. In the only out of all the instruments, measuring instruments, only PMMC is the only instrument which can measure the DC and the remaining all other instruments can measure the AC as well as DC. So EMMC can be used for measurement of DC as well as AC. Thermocouple type instrument can also use to measure the AC as well as DC. So, these thermocouple instruments can work for both AC as well as DC and these instruments are very very accurate only for a frequency range of above 50 megahertz. So, only for a frequency range of above 50 megahertz only these instruments, the thermocouple type instruments are very accurate. So, we can say if what is the meaning of transfer instruments means if I design any instrument to measure only DC and without modifications if I use the same instrument to measure the AC quantity also then whatever the accuracy in the DC as well as AC quantity measurement if it is same then those type of instruments are called as a transfer instruments and the examples of the transfer instruments are the EMMC means electrodynamometer type instrument as well as thermocouple type instrument. EMMC and the thermocouple type instruments are basically used to measure both AC as well as DC quantity. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So therefore the answer is thermocouple type instrument as well as the electrodynamometer type instruments are basically they are called as the transfer instruments in the basically the standardization of the AC potential meters. So this is the correct solution of this question. So let me repeat this definition of the transfer instrument. The definition of the transfer instrument is an instrument which is basically calibrated with a DC source and then used without any modification to measure the AC quantity, then those type of instruments are called as the transfer instruments and these have the same accuracy for both a DC quantity measurement as well as the AC quantity measurement. So that is the meaning of the transfer instrument means, suppose if I am going with an instrument which is basically calibrated with a DC source, means in that instrument we are going to use the DC source and without any modifications we can measure by using that instrument without any modifications we can measure the DC quantity as well as the AC quantity and the accuracy in the both these measurements DC quantity measurement as well as the AC quantity measurement if the accuracy is same then those type of instruments are called as the transfer instruments. So this is the accurate definition of the transfer instruments. So now we are going to solve the 93rd question. See the question here. Which of the following statement is wrong with respect to MI instruments means moving iron instruments. So they are given the four uh, statements. In this we need to check out of these four options which is the wrong option we need to check. Option A which is scale is not uniform. Option B for low voltage range the power consumption is more. 
option C, which is the repulsion type instruments are much more common than the attraction type instruments. And option D, which is attraction type instruments will usually have a more inductance than that of the corresponding repulsion instrument. So these four options, option D is the correct solution of this question means it is a out of these four uh, options, this is the wrong statement. Whereas the remaining three are correct statements. So let us discuss something more about this moving iron instruments. So this is called as a moving iron, moving iron instrument, which is in the moving iron, iron instruments, the deflection torque expression is KD is equal to half I square DL by D theta. Whereas the congruent torque is equal to the expression of the congruent torque is equal to KC into theta. At a steady state, the deflection torque is equal to congruent torque. So therefore, keep these two expressions in this formula. So therefore, half I square DL by D theta is equal to KC into theta. So from this we can say theta is directly proportional to I square. So the relation between the theta and the current is non-uniform. It is a it is a non-linear. So therefore, we can say non-linear scale, or we can simply call it as a scale is not uniform because the relation between the theta as well as the current is a in a non-linear fashion. So therefore, we can say the scale is not uniform or non-linear scale. So therefore, we can conclude that MI instruments have the non-linear scale for the current measurement as well as the voltage measurement. The next one is you can see clearly TD is the proportional to I square. See for a small amount of current, for a small amount of current, the torque is very, very high because of the sphere quality. So if you take a very current of very small value, squaring means it's a very high value. So therefore, we can say MI instruments has the high operating torque because the deflation torque is the proportional to I square. Even for a small amount of current, the TD is huge. So therefore, we can say the MI instruments has the high operating torque so td is proportional to i square suppose if the current is positive if the current is positive means positive square is again positive so td is also positive let me assume positive means clockwise direction i'm i'm, I'm assuming like this suppose if the current is negative then what is going to happen if you substitute here negative whole square is again positive so td is again positive it is also in the same direction to clockwise. So therefore, we can say even if you are going to give an AC source or the DC source, even if you are going to apply AC quantity or the DC quantity, still the torque is in the same direction. So therefore, we can say it can be used to measure the both the AC as well as the DC sources. AC as well as the DC quantity. AC quantity as well as DC quantity it can easily measure. See, AC means it will have both positive as well as negative. DC means only positive. So therefore. Even you apply AC or DC, the torque is always in the same direction. So therefore, it can be used to measure the both AC quantity as well as the DC quantity. So we can say MI instruments is used to measure the AC quantity as well as the DC quantity. So whereas the power, see at the low voltage range, the power consumption is very, very high in the case of the MI instruments because there you see there is an electromagnet there. So then there is an electromagnet. And also, there is an air gap between the iron piece as well as the electromagnet. So, it is going to consume more amount of power in order to attract or the repel, so repulsion. In, in order to attract the moving iron piece, which is somewhat far, far away when compared to this oil. See, the power consumption is very, very high during the low voltage range because the gap between the coil as well as the iron piece is somewhat more. So, because of this, it is going to consume a lot of, a lot of power when the voltage is very less. So, therefore, it can attract or the repel the uh, iron piece. So, moving iron piece. Because of this reason only, the amount of power consumption is very, very high. The power consumption in the moving iron instruments is very high and for the low voltage range. The next one is here. Moving iron instruments are classified into two types. So, one is called as an attraction type moving iron instrument and the other is called as a repulsion type moving iron instrument. So in the case of attraction type moving an instrument, we have one electromagnet as well as one iron piece. So because of one electromagnet as well as one iron piece, they are going to get attracted whenever you give a supply to electromagnet, the iron piece is going to get attracted. So that, that is the reason it is called as the attraction type moving an instrument. Whereas in the repulsion type moving an instrument, we have one electromagnet as well as two iron pieces. See, we, suppose if you are going to excite the electromagnet, because of this, these two iron pieces, the two faces of these iron pieces will have the same polarity. Same polarity means they are going to ripple because same poles are going to get rippled. So because of this reason only, these two iron pieces will have the same amount of polarity corresponding them. So because of this, there is a repulsion. So based on this only, we are going to call this as the repulsion type moving iron instruments. 
Suppose if you are going to compare this both these moving air instruments, we can say the repulsion type moving air instrument is used to very very more when compared to attraction type moving air instrument. So we can say more common means it is used more when compared to this one. So therefore, the repulsion type moving air instrument is used to in a very large applications when compared to attraction type moving air instrument. So we can say more common means the repulsion type instrument is used in a very larger applications when compared to attraction type moving air instrument. So this is more common and this is a less common. But if you are going to compare the inductance, we can say the inductance of the attraction type moving air instrument is always lesser when compared to the inductance of the repulsion type moving air instrument. So we can say the attraction type is less common as well as its inductance is also very less. Whereas repulsion type instruments are more common as well as the their inductance is, is, is their inductance is also very higher. So we can say these are the some of the important points regarding the moving air instruments. So finally, I can say repulsion type instruments are very more common as well as the inductance is also very high. Whereas the attraction type moving air instruments are less common and the inductance is also very less. But in the question they are given, it is in the reverse fashion they are given, which is the inductance of the moving air instrument is very higher, when, it is very lesser when compared to uh, the attraction type moving air instruments. It is wrong. So this is the correct solution of this question. So therefore we can say, yes, the scale is not uniform. For low voltage range, the power consumption is very more. And repulsion type instruments are much more common when compared to attraction type instrument. Similarly, I have already told you, which is the repulsion type instruments has the more inductance when compared to attraction type instrument. But in this question, but, but in this option, they are doing the reverse fashion, which is attraction type instrument will usually have a more inductance. It is wrong. Basically, they have less inductance when compared to repulsion type instrument. So, option D is the wrong statement. So, these things always you have to keep in your mind. So, finally, I can say the the repulsion type instrument is uh, more common, so it, so inductance is also very high. Whereas the attraction type instrument is very less common, so its inductance is also very less. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So now we are going to discuss the 94th question. See the question here. A PMMC instrument can be used as the ballastic galvanometer by. So a PMMC instrument can be used as the ballastic galvanometer by option A, eliminating the control sphinx. Option B, using the control springs of the large moment of inertia. And option C, using a low shunt resistance. Using a low resistance shunt. And option D, using a high resistance, high series resistance. See, by using the option D, what we can get, we can basically, by using a high series resistance, we can make a, extend the range of the volume of the PMMC. Whereas by using a low resistance shunt, we can increase the, or we can extend the range of the PMMC as the armature. For us, by eliminating the control springs, we can make the PMMC instrument to act like a flux meter. Whereas, by using the control, by using the control springs of the large amount of inertia, means we are trying to make the control springs of large amount of inertia, then we are going to convert the PMMC into ballastic galvanometer. So, option B is the solution of this question. So, let's solve this one. So, basically, let me explain what is the meaning of the ballastic galvanometer as well as the flux meter. See, ballastic galvanometer means it is a device which is used to measure the current in a closed circuit and basically it works on the principle of the Lorentz force law. See, the meaning of ballastic galvanometer, it is basically used to measure the current in a closed circuit and it basically works on the principle of the Lorentz force law. In the ballastic galvanometer, the control power should be very, 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 very high. It should be very, very huge. Whereas the damping, damping torque should be very, very less. It is nearly equal to zero. Whereas in the case of flux meter, the flux meter is a, it is basically a device which is used to measure the magnetic flux of a permanent magnet. So it works in the principle of the Faraday's law. In this flux meter, we should have the control torque of very, very low value, whereas the damping torque is of very, very high. So you can see both are of quite opposite nature. Here the kernel torque is very very high, but it is zero. Whereas here the damping torque is very very zero. It is nearly equal to zero, but here it is high. So these two are of opposite nature. So now with the help of some modifications to the PMMC, by using some by doing some modifications for the PMMC, we can get the velocity galvanometer as well as the flux meter. So what are those modifications? Now let us discuss. See in the PMMC, we are going to use the spring, the spring as a controlling torque. So what is the expression of the control torque in the case of PMMC? Tc is equal to Kc into theta. So we can say Tc, the Kc is nothing but the spring constant. 
spring constant is always the idea proportional to moment of inertia. See, in the case of velocity galvanometer, I want the constant torque to be very, very high. So, if you want a huge value of constant torque means, case should be very high. Case should be high means, the M value should be very high. So, therefore, whatever the controlling springs that you are going to use, they should have high amount of moment of inertia. If M is very high, case is also very high. So, case is also very, very high. So, therefore, replace normal springs by the those springs which are having the high moment of inertia so therefore they replace into normal control springs by the huge amount of large amount of moment of inertia so using the control springs of large amount of inertia then we can convert the pmmc into barastic galvanometer so now we will see in the case of flux meter i've already told in the case of flux meter we need the current torque to be very very less it is nearly equal to zero means i want this M value to be very very less means we can even neglect it. We can we, we can we can basically eliminate it. Suppose if we are going to eliminate the total control strings, what is going to happen? The M is zero. If the M is zero, K is also zero. K is, K is equal to zero means T is also equal to zero. So therefore T is also equal to zero. So these are the conditions that we need to satisfy by doing some modifications for this PMMC. So finally, I can say, in the case of velocity galvanometer, I need huge amount of controlling torque. So this we can achieve only by replacing the controlling springs of large amount of inertia. So in the case of PMMC, if you are going to use the, so a PMMC instrument can be used as a velocity galvanometer by using the controlling springs of large amount of inertia. Whereas in the case of flux meter, I want the controlling torque to be, to be nearly equal to zero. Means I can eliminate this controlling spring so they, so because of this reason I can give the TCL is nearly equal to zero. So therefore, in the case of PMMC, the PMMC instrument can be used as a flux meter by eliminating the control springs. I think now we have understood. So therefore, in the case of PMMC, if you replace the normal springs by the those springs of large amount of inertia, then we are converting the PMMC into velocity galvanometer. Similarly, in the case of PMMC, if you try to eliminate the controlling springs, then we are going to uh, convert the PMMC into flux meter. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So by these modifications, we can, we can convert the PMMC to ballastic galvanometer as well as PMMC to flux meter. So you can see in the option one, by eliminating the control springs, we can convert the PMMC into flux meter. Whereas by using those control springs of large amount of inertia, we can convert the PMMC into a ballastic galvanometer by using a lower resistance and we can extend the range of the PMMC as an ammeter. By using the high series resistance, we can extend the range of the, the, the range of the PMMC uh, instrument as a voltage. More extend the range of the voltage we can extend by the PMMC with the help of using the high series resistance. So all these things always you have to keep in your mind. So therefore, option B, which is by using those control springs which are of large amount of inertia. If you keep this in the PMMC, it is basically it is equal to elastic galvanometer. So option B is the correct solution of this question. So now we are going to discuss the many of the questions. See the question here. The two pressure coils of single phase dynamometer type power factor meter are can as follows. So in this question, we are asking there are two pressure coils in the case of single phase dynamometer type power factor meter. So what is the type of the connection we need to say? So what are these four options we need to tell about the type of the connection? of these two pressure coils. So for the four options, the option B is the current solution of this question which is one coil, one pressure coil is basically connected in series with respect to non-inductive resistance and the other pressure coil is basically connected in series with the inductive choke coil. So basically in this question we are asking about the type of the connection of the two pressure coils in the case of dynamometer power factor meter. So option B is the current solution of this question. Let's see the actual solution. So this is a circuit diagram of the single phase dynamometer type power factor meter. So you can see clearly in the case of this dynamometer type power factor meter, we have one current coil. So this is a basically CC means one current coil and we have two pressure coils. So this is called as the pressure coil one and this is called as the, this are, it, it is called as the pressure coil two. So basically these two are joined with a spindle here, with a small spindle here. So basically these two are joined here. So from here we are going to take the pointer like this. So this is a power factor meter reading. So this is a current coil and these are two pressure coils. There are two pressure coils. These are two pressure coils are identical in each and everything. So these two pressure coils are 
identical in each and everything means same number of terms as well as the same number of dimensions. See, whatever the dimensions of the pressure coil 1 and the tones of pressure coil 1 are equal to the pressure coil to tones as well as the dimensions. We, we can say basically these two are identical in each and everything. So now you can see clearly this pressure coil 1 is connected in series with respect to a resistance well as the pressure coil 2 is connected in series with respect to a inductive. We can say inductive choke coil also we can say it is a inductive well as here it is a resistive. So we can say the pressure coil 1 is connected in series with the non-inductive resistance means purely resistive. It means purely resistive whereas the pressure coil 2 is connected in series with respect to inductive choke coil means it is purely inductive. It is purely inductive. So now this is angle theta. So this line is called the plane of reference. It is a reference line. It is a reference line. So with respect to this reference line, I am going to take this angle as a theta. Whereas the angle between the two pressure coils, whereas the angle between these, whereas the angle between these two pressure coils is always equal to 90 degree. Whereas this is angle theta. So now here on this pointer, on this pointer, because of this pressure coil one, there will be a torque like this. This is called as a TA. Whereas, because of this pressure coil 2, there will be a torque on this point like this. This is TB. So, these two torques are always opposite of each other. So, TA is a torque which is produced because of this pressure coil 1. Whereas, TB is a torque which is produced due to this pressure coil 2. These two torques are always opposite in direction. Whereas, at the steady state, TA is equal to TB. Therefore, the point will be at the steady state. And you are going to read the power factor of this load. So, if you want to measure the power factor of the load, then with the help of this connection of this dynamic type power factor meter, then we can measure the what is the power factor of the load. We can easily measure with the type of this, uh, with, the, with the type of this power factor meter. So, we can see it has one current coil and two pressure coils and the pressure coil one is created in series with the non-inductive resistance or pure resistor, whereas the pressure coil two is created in series with respect to inductive choke coil or purely inductive. So, we can say like this. So, I is the current which is flowing in the pressure coil 1 and I B is the current which is flowing in this pressure coil 2. So, we can say what is the angle between V and I A as it is a pure resistor. So, we can say that the angle is nearly equal to 0. Whereas, the, the angle between the V and I B is nothing but it is a purely inductive. So, it is nearly equal to 90 degree. I have already told you, T A is the torque which is produced because of the pressure coil 1. Let me assume it is the clockwise direction. Then, it is the clockwise on the pointer. Whereas, TB is a torque which is produced because of the because of this pressure coil 2 and is always opposite to the previous one. This is anti-clockwise. So anti-clockwise on this point. Here. So at steady state, both these torques are unequal in magnitude. Then only the pointer is going to remain at the steady state. So DA is called TB. If you equate these two things, there will be a lot of expression analysis. And finally, you are going to get whatever this theta, whatever this theta is called as a power factor angle of the load. So, whatever this angle theta, whatever this angle theta is called as A, this angle we are going to see in the case of this power factor meter. So, this angle itself is nothing but it is a power factor of this load or you can say the power factor angle of this load. So, these things always you have to keep in your mind. So, whatever this angle with respect to this reference, that itself is called as a power factor angle of the load at the steady state condition. So, with the help of these things, we can measure the different types of load power factor also we can measure whether it is a transition line or whether it is a normal load with the help of this instrument we can measure the power factor so these things always you have to keep in your mind so therefore it's a very basic question they asked about the type of correction with respect to the pressure coils so pressure coil one is created in series with respect to you can say non-inductive coil or simply we can say it is a purely resistive coil or non-inductive resistance are purely resistive whereas the pressure coil two is created in series with respect to inductive choke coil or purely inductive coil so these things always you have to keep in your mind so this is the correct solution of this question so option b is the correct solution of this question you can read you can read the other things also so parallel means wrong here also parallel means it is wrong so here series and series but one coil is cut in series with the non-inductive resistance and the other coil is cut in series with the capacitance there is no capacitance so option c is also wrong so you can see clearly from this expression Parallel means option 1 is wrong. There is no parallel anywhere. So, in the option C, is option D also, there is a parallel. So, it is also wrong. There is no parallel connection. But here, then they are given the series capacitance. There is no capacitance. Only there is a resistor as well as inductor. So, so therefore, option B is the only thing. It is the resolution of this question.